Hi friends, we are throwing the TBR out the window. The TBRs have not been TBRing for me, unfortunately, the past couple of months. I've been reading a lot less than I typically do, and look, I'm still reading like five to seven books a month, and that is objectively a lot of books to be reading in one month, but I'm not having a good time. I feel like you guys can tell. I'm not reading as much as I would like to be. I'm not loving everything that I'm reading, and that's fine. Like, I read enough books that I'm not gonna love everything that I read, but I just feel like so much of my reading has been reading for a specific video and not reading whatever it is that I wanna read. So that's what we're gonna do this week. We're gonna read three things that I don't know how to fit into a video, but I wanna read so freaking badly. So this is the stack, hopefully, that we'll get through this week. I reserve the right to change this because we're not doing a TBR. That's the whole point of this video is that we're not doing a TBR and there will be no TBR for November. I know, I'm shocked too. We'll see if it comes back in December. I want romance, I want horror, and I want thriller. Those are the things that I wanna read this week. And that's what we're doing. That's all I have to say to you. I will see you when some reading has occurred. Hello, coming to you from the couch because we just ate lunch and now there are multiple dogs on top of me, so we can't move. Okay, we need to talk about The Disappearing Act. I'm halfway through it. <laughs> Can I help you? No, I'm actually, I'm actually good on face because he's sitting so much. <laughs> he's eating me, Webster! I'm being eaten! <laughs> okay, we need to talk about The Disappearing Act. I'm halfway through it and I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. I don't know what Katherine Steadman puts in her books because I usually don't love reading about actors and actresses and I don't love reading about rich people and rich people problems, but um, I'm eating it up. I absolutely love it. So the premise of the book is that we have our main character. She is an English actress and her fiance slash boyfriend of like six years leaves her suddenly for a younger woman who's 21. She goes through this messy breakup, public breakup, and then she goes to LA for pilot season. So she's this British woman in America. I really like how Catherine Steadman writes the British woman in America situation. I just, I liked it in Something in the Water. I'm liking it again in The Disappearing Act. She goes to LA, she's having meetings, she's going to auditions. She's got this like really big break on the horizon. And one of her auditions that she goes to, she meets this woman there and she ends up like uh, feeding her like parking meter for her while she goes into her audition. And so she's got this woman's keys and her wallet. And when she goes back to return the keys and the wallet, the woman is gone. She has disappeared. And so now we're trying to figure out what happened to this woman, but she is nowhere to be found. It's feeling at this point more mystery than thriller because we're really just, we're just looking for this one woman and we can't find her. And that's kind of all that's happening. But there are also like, she's lost her apartment key card and now things she thinks maybe be, are being moved in her apartment. She's also trying to figure out what happened to this woman so she can return these keys and this wallet. And it's just feeling like kind of like a descent into madness almost where we're uncovering things about this that are starting to get more and more creepy and weird and we've just had a big reveal about halfway through where i'm not really excited to see what's gonna happen but i feel like my brain is working overtime my brain has done so much just reading this like i'm so curious about i have all these theories i'm so excited <laughs> the audiobook is incredible katherine steadman i think narrates all of her books at least all the ones i've listened to an audiobook she has narrated and i really love when authors narrate their own books i think it really adds to the experience because you're hearing it in the author's voice. That's what I have to say about the disappearing act. I am gonna cuddle with this little mushy puppy and finish up our lunch break. And then we'll get back to work and get back to reading.
I'm making tea, but I need to tell you about the disappearing act because I finished it late last night. I loved it. I loved it so much. I don't know what Catherine Steadman puts in her books, but they are absolutely incredible. I just eat them up every single time. One of these days, I'm gonna set up the camera so I can actually be as tall. Well, I guess that's fine. I don't need to squat. I don't know why I'm out here squatting in front of you when I don't need to. <laughs> I love the disappearing act. It was so twisty and turny. I'm sure you saw my facial expressions. I wasn't sure if it was gonna get thriller if it was just gonna stay in this like mystery genre, but it got thriller. I'm really, really happy with where this went. I was always on the edge of my seat. I always wanted to know what was gonna happen. There were multiple reveals. I would say that the first half of this book, not a lot happens. And then the second half of this book, everything happens. I was looking on Storygraph as I was logging that I read it last night and it's set up as like a medium pace thriller. And I think really the first half of it is a slow paced thriller. The second half of it is fast paced. So bear that in mind if you're someone who doesn't love a slow start to a book. But I actually kind of love that her books do that because we get time to kind of really get to know our main character, understand their motivations for things, and then things get crazy at the end. I had a really good time. I think the only book I haven't read by her is called Mr. Nobody. I will be acquiring that as soon as I can. Tea has been made. I need to go back to work. It's Friday, by the way. Happy Friday. I'm so excited for this weekend. Okay, sorry. Doggies want to come in. Uh, after work, we need to go on an errand extravaganza. Do you want to come here? Do you want to say hi? Oh, okay. We need to go on an errand extravaganza after work because I need groceries and I have heard that some stores are putting out their editions of Iron Flame early. So we're gonna see if we can go acquire one. We're, I'm, I will allow myself to go to two stores. I'll go to Walmart and I'll go to Target. And if it's not there, we're waiting <laughs> until Tuesday. I didn't pre-order this because I was hoping to go to one of those like midnight release parties, which might still be happening, but I don't think my local Barnes & Noble is doing one. And now the dog's drinking his water. Okay, I'm gonna go to work. I'll check in with you after. <laughs> I've not been to Walmart or Target, but I am in the parking lot of the Barnes & Noble because I know that some stores are doing like midnight release parties. I thought maybe that would be fun for us to do together. So I went to check if they were doing one. They're not, but they told me the store that is. So now I have a reservation for Iron Flame release party on Monday night. So that'll be really fun. I've never been to a midnight release. Well, actually I have been to one before. When the Harry Potter books were coming out, my mom was really, really into them. So I went with her to one of the midnight releases when I was a kid. This will be fun. I'm gonna see if my friend wants to come with me, but I know the reservations are kind of filling up. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna go to Walmart or Target. I was out doing some errands for work. I had some stuff to post and I was right by the Barnes and Noble. So I figured I'd pop in and see if we could get some Iron Flame news, which we did. So very happy about that. Let's drive home because I have started reading Part of Your World and we need to chat about it. We've made it back home, so I get to chat to you about part of your world. I am absolutely loving this. I grabbed the audiobook from my library so I could listen to it while I was doing these work errands today in the car, and it it's so nice. It's so fun. I will say something has just happened that is not fun or good. I would definitely say check content warnings before reading this one. Uh, thankfully, I knew what I was getting into with this one, so I wasn't caught off guard. There is talk of an abusive relationship in here. Our main character's previous relationship this guy is still like kind of somewhat in her life and has just done something awful. So she's still kind of dealing with the ramifications of that and she's still talking about it. A lot of her friends don't know. I just want you guys to know that that is a thing in here. But this little romance relationship between our main character, gosh, what's her name? Alexis and Daniel is so cute. I also didn't realize that this is set in Minnesota, in the Midwest. Our main character is from Minneapolis. That's where she lives. I think Daniel lives in Iowa. Daniel lives in Iowa, Alexis lives in Minneapolis. And she's like this big shot ER doctor. And he is the mayor of this tiny little town. And he has this little baby goat who is so cute and her name is Chloe and he has a shaggy dog who jumps on people and I have one of those too and I am really having a nice time. I really like their little relationship. There was a 10 year age gap and Alexis is very concerned about it. She is 38 and he is 28. Their chemistry is incredible. He takes her for their first date to like a little drive-in movie theater which is so cute. I love a drive-in movie theater and I'm just having a really fun time following their little romance. This guy, what's his name? Her ex, I hate him. He sucks so much. Nick or something? Neil, I hate Neil. He sucks so much and I really hope that he leaves her life so quickly because I want her to not have 
to even recognize that that man exists because ew, just like that. Um, I'm having a really lovely time. I have already laughed out loud. The audiobook narrators are incredible. Julia Whalen narrates the female main characters parts and I love her as an audiobook narrator. I'm having a great time. Honestly, all I wanna do is continue reading this, but I need to finish working and then I'm meeting up with Dan because two of his childhood friends are in town. So I'm gonna get to meet some of his friends, which I'm very, very excited about. We're going to a boxing match, which I'm terrified of. So that's gonna be horrifying and I'll let you guys know what happens? Good morning, friends. I am sitting here with my delicious little bowl of cereal. I put a banana and a strawberry in it. And I am very excited to munch. Last night was so much fun. I got to meet some of Dan's childhood friends. And that was really, really nice. I really feel like meeting someone's childhood friends is such a good way to get to know them. You get to see who kind of made them who they are. And yeah. I had a really nice time. I am now 50% of the way through this book and we're having some really kind of intense conversations about relationships and how a person kind of fits into your world as the title would suggest. Our female main character, Alexis, is really struggling with seeing how Daniel is gonna fit into her life because he is 10 years younger than her and he is very much not in the social or financial class that she is in. She isn't having a problem with it, but she is anticipating other people having a problem with it. And like her brother recently got married and completely kind of gave up his former life to go be with his wife because he knew that no one would accept her. And so now our main character is kind of grappling with those questions. Everyone in her life is like taking Taking the side of her abusive ex and that is just so <laughs> infuriating that like her dad is going golfing with her abusive ex and is like come have lunch with us and she's like no i'm not doing that this man is awful and i just find it so infuriating that no one in her life is doing what's best for her and they're doing what looks best, what's good on paper. I feel like it is causing me to have a lot of these same thought processes in my own head, just thinking about my new relationship and all the people that I have introduced him to and all the people who have yet to meet him and like what they're gonna think about him. And that is scary to introduce someone that you care so much about to the other people that you care so much about and be worried about how that's going to go, even if there aren't like really big things going on, like there are for our couple here where they live in a different state from each other and there's a big age gap and there's also a big gap financially um, and all those sorts of things. So my update is I hate Alexis's family and friends for not accepting her and not accepting Daniel and siding with her abusive ex. That is never the right move. And I am really, really loving watching their little romance unfold. Something really awful just happened to Alexis and the one place she wanted to go was to go be with Daniel. And that's how I feel about my Daniel. When anything bad happens, I just want to go spend time with him because he immediately makes it better. Okay, I'm gonna stop gushing about this book and eat my lovely little bowl of cereal. I think we are going to the Renaissance Festival today and I will, of course, take you with us and show you our little costumes. <laughs> I have so many updates for you. So, sad update number one. <laughs> we did not go to the Renaissance Festival. We got all the way there and they were sold out of tickets and we didn't buy them ahead of time and we're really bummed about it. So I think Dan and I are gonna maybe try to go next week, but we're not sure if we're gonna be able to make it. If you're trying to go to a Renaissance festival, apparently they're capable of selling out of tickets and I did not know that. I have also finished reading Part of Your World. I finished this late last night. I basically, it's now Sunday night, by the way. The only thing I did yesterday was devour this book in between the plans that I had with Dan and his friends. This book made me cry multiple times. It hit me so hard for absolutely no reason. I don't know if I was just tired because life has been really busy lately or what was going on with me and my brain, but I, this book really hit me harder than a romance has any right to hit. Um, I really just was crying about absolutely everything and I absolutely loved the way that this ended. I would say for most of this book, I kind of wanted to just like shake Alexis a little bit and just be like, girly, you obviously love this man. Why are you not trying to figure out a way to make this work? Like she writes this relationship off so fast 
and tells him that they can't be anything serious to each other and they can't be boyfriend and girlfriend because it would never work and whatever. And not to like give you too much information about my own personal relationship because I don't know how much I want to share on the internet about that. But there were some things that I was worried about in the beginning of this relationship that we did not align on. One of those things being, I wasn't sure if I wanted to have kids and I was pretty sure that I didn't want them and he really wants kids. And like, that's something that we've been kind of unpacking together since the beginning of the relationship. But I just was so mad at Alexis because she wrote this relationship off so quickly and was like, well, there's no way this could work. I can't imagine my life without him. It makes me so sad to even think about breaking this off, but it'll never work. And instead of doing whatever she can to figure out a way to make it work. She hurt him. She did some bad things to him. And the poor man went through a lot because he was always ready to do whatever he needed to for her. And she wasn't until the end of the book. And um, yeah, I don't know. That was my little pet peeve about Alexis. I really did love this. I would highly recommend it. Please check onto warnings before you read. I love this relationship. I loved how involved other people were in their lives. Like we really got to know one of Alexis's friends in particular and all the people from the small town that Daniel lives in. And it was just such a well thought out, well developed story. And I really, really appreciated it. And I had a great time reading. I also realized that I never gave you any context about the boxing fight situation that we went to or how that was. So let me uh, fill you in on that. So for anyone who doesn't know me in real life, my boyfriend, Daniel, is a boxer. He does amateur boxing and he has a fight coming up soon. And it was actually supposed to be this weekend, but it didn't end up happening this weekend. So we went to the thing to go witness it. I had never been to a boxing match before this. I am worried about him getting hurt. <laughs> I wanted to go to kind of see what was up. I feel better about him doing this now because the referees stop the round, stop the bout fight. I don't even know the terminology. I'm so new to this. They stop it so early if they think that it's a really like uneven match. They don't want people to get hurt. I feel better about it, but yeah, it was an interesting place to be. Curious to hear if any of you have boxed before or have been to a boxing match fight. I don't know what it's supposed to be called. Daniel, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I don't know the words. I support you and I know you're gonna win your fight. And of course I'm going to be there to support him. So I'm glad that I have a little context now for what I'm going to get myself into. Anyways, that's my boxing update, I guess. <laughs> One of you lovely people sent me a gifty and you didn't leave a note and I don't know who you are. So I'm gonna come on here and beg you to tell me who you are, DM me on Instagram or comment on this video um, and tell me who you are so I can say thank you because somebody sent me not just one book, but two books off of my Amazon wish list. And I am so excited to read both of these. This is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. And I have read some of this author's work before, and I have heard such good things about this one in particular. It's such a nice little short book. I love a short book, The Packs a Punch. I love a post-apocalyptic book, and I think this is going to be incredible. That's literally all I know about this and I don't think I want to know anymore going into it because I just want to uncover all the twisties and turns myself. So if you're the person who sent me this book, please let me know why you like it so much if you've read it before. Thank you so much for sending this to me. I appreciate you so much. They also sent me Witch Head Atelier Volume 2, which is so exciting because I read Volume 1 earlier this year and really, really loved it. And I'm so excited to keep working, if I can hold this correctly, working my way through this little manga series. In the first book, we followed her origin story of going into this witchy school, meeting some witchy people. And now at the end of the last book, we had a little cliffhanger. She ended up somewhere else. And I am really excited to see what adventures she's going to have in this new location. I'm being really vague so that I don't spoil anything, but I am so excited to continue in this series. So if you're the lovely human who sent me both of these books, please let me know, DM me on Instagram or tell me in the comments because I would really love to thank you, but I don't know what your name is. So if you could let me know, that would be lovely. So it's Sunday night. We have read two books so far. I'm not feeling like I want to read the grip of it, which is the thing that I originally wanted to read in this video. And I'm going to take it off the TBR because we're not doing a TBR. That's the whole point of this video. I have decided that I want to read the first volume of Giant Days because that's what I want to do. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to sit here in this comfy little chair in the corner of my office and we're going to read this book. 
one of you lovely humans again sent this to me so this is from juliet juliet i'm so excited to read this little book we are following college friends on college adventures and that's what i want to read so let's do it <laughs> Okay, well, this was absolutely lovely in every sense of the word. I had so much fun reading this and following these three friends on all of their college shenanigans. It was such a lovely time. Makes me feel so nostalgic for the college times, but honestly, it makes me feel nostalgic for something that I never really had. I never lived in a room or a suite or a house with a bunch of friends that I was really close with. And I feel like I kind of missed out on that whole experience. I was never close with my roommates when I did live with roommates. And then now having dogs, it's tough to have roommates. But I just, I can't help but feel like I missed out on some of the fun shenanigans that we saw in Giant Days. But that's what living in a nursing home is gonna be. It's gonna be me and a bunch of my pals when we're old and crusty, basically having college shenanigans all over again. Something to look forward to. I would highly recommend Giant Days. I loved this so much. I'm going to be acquiring more volumes of this as soon as I can. I had such a fantastic time. It was exactly what I needed tonight to just put a smile on my face. It made me giggle. It was exactly everything that I wanted it to be. And I think this is actually where I'm gonna leave you guys. We read three books in this video. I loved all of them. So that was a big win, a huge win, a massive win. I'm gonna stop this here because I think starting tomorrow, I'm going to be trying to read both Fourth Wing, well, rereading Fourth Wing and then reading Iron Flame. That'll be up the next week after you're seeing this. I'm really excited to do that. I can't wait for that release. I feel like it's so much fun to love something while everyone else really loves something. And I feel like I haven't felt that in a long time. It feels really good to be part of the hype. So. I'm gonna go drink my hot cocoa and go to bed. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for these past couple of days. I feel like this video was exactly what I needed to reset and get back in the swing of things. I would love to know what you guys have been reading, how your reading has been going. The Bloom and Readathon is happening right now. So let's quickly check in on the bingo board and see if I have crossed off anything from the bingo board. Here's what I'm using. I'm gonna use Part of Your World for, they could be for the B space because I've been hearing a lot of people talking about this one. I'm gonna use Giant Days for the Daffodil space because it is definitely about friendship and then we're gonna use the disappearing act for the water space because that is an author that i was thirsty to read more of and i'm really really glad that i did i'm gonna keep picking up all of her work we read three incredible things in this video thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i will see you next week for fourth wing and iron flame shenanigans and we'll cross off some more spaces on the bloom and readathon bingo board and that's it that's the video i love you all bye